everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the Hotel Transylvania film series. These fun family films show the life of Dracula. Bed, bed. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Who runs, I do not say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> who runs the hotel for monsters who want to get away from humans. As the trilogy continues, the monsters go on crazy adventures in each film. And yes, it stars Adam Sandler. Yes. <laughs> and this was made, I think, by Sony Pictures mm -hmm. Animation. You know, did the Spider-Verse and many other films. Mm -hmm. And there's one of their few uh, better movies, not counting the Emoji movie. <laughs> and this is the first three of actually a four-part series. But we're just going to call it a trilogy since 1, 2, and 3 have already, already come out. Yeah, they, apparently they confirmed back in February of this year that they're going to do a fourth one, which mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised because, really, I didn't see it going past 3. Well, I guess they're going to show Drake now with probably his new wife. Maybe, That's yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, like, I don't know what else you're going to do because I, I was surprised the third one was actually good. Yes, it We're was. going in order the first Movie was really, really funny. We watched it every year mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was surprised was even better because mm -hmm. it was really fun and had all these new additions and stuff, and it was really good. Th mm -hmm. Third one, wasn't so sure about it because they weren't at the hotel anymore. They were on this monster cruise ship, <laughs> and like, okay, they got to get out of their comfort zone. And it still actually turned out to be great still. Yes, it was. It was just a little more goofier than the first two. They didn't right. have as many sentimental or sadder moments as the first two had. It was more just being goofy and having a good time. Exactly. So, let us get goofy and have a good time. Now, starting with Hotel Transylvania, the, the first original. movie. Yes, and in this one, you see how he uh, built the hotel to protect his daughter, mm -hmm. and the daughter is voiced by Selena Gomez. Mm -hmm. And and there you have all these different monsters from all across lands and ones that got voiced vampires. By really big comedy stars and movie stars. Right. Is way to put it. Right. Thinking about Drax. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they said, movie stars. So, yeah, right. they were voiced by a really big star right. doing the character. And they had the regular monsters that you know from, like, from Universal along with the other folklore monsters. You had the uh, Frank, the Frankenstein, he's called Frankie or Frank, because mm -hmm. he's Kevin James. You had the werewolf, who's uh, Steve Buscemi. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine, you can imagine what the world's going to be like for this version if he's doing the voice. <laughs> and you, you had, had the, the mummy. Yeah, the mummy. It was first CeeLo Green, and mm -hmm. then it was Larry Shane to Keegan Michael Key. I guess they couldn't keep him the all three movies. So this one's CeeLo Green. And then they had David Spade as the yes. invisible man <laughs> who just had a pair of glasses. That's the only reason you know he's there. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really fun, and I liked how they took them and they made them family. So it was a shout-out to the Monsters and the Adams family. Right, absolutely. One. It was like a mesh. Right, and the most kids were had by the, the werewolves. Right. And they had pups for days. And every movie, they come back with more and more and more kids. Right. <laughs> This was fun, and it was a refreshing take on the monster genre. And as you said, it had the humor, it had romance, it had a little drama, it had some sentimental moments, but mm -hmm. everything meshed and worked really well together. Mm -hmm. And the voice actors he chose were terrific in their respective parts. Mm -hmm. And Selena, Go Selena Gomez is excellent as his daughter. Right. I mean, she, and everything needed to be brought to the character where you think she's this average teen. Right. Having all this teen angst and issues. Right. And she's, she's 118 old. years old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for this one, to give a generalization of what the first one was about, basically is a human comes to the hotel and she ends up falling in love Played with him. Andy Samba. Right. And she ends up falling in love with him. It's supposed to be... No humans could, should have been able to get there, but somehow he did. Yeah. It was a place where the monsters can get away from humans so they wouldn't be attacked because mm -hmm. it's been a long-standing thing. They haven't seen humans so long. They still think that they're, uh, they'll still be ruthless and get monsters and they'll and have, have angry the mobs. And, and asses, right. and like Frankenstein, right. right? And then they find out later that the people love monsters. They got conventions for them. They see the world loves monsters, and so they didn't have to go into hiding blah, anymore. Blah, blah. I did not say blah, blah, blah. I only say blah, blah, blah. When I say I don't say blah, blah, blah. And it did have a share, like you said, of Sarah Moles. He had to deal about what happened with her mom, which mm -hmm. is handled great. There were some scenes they didn't use, but it was still handled well where it didn't, like, just be a downer for the whole film or take away from what the story Become was. Become Disney five, right. right. And then you had the second one, which came out in Hotel 20... Pennsylvania 2. Yes, it came out in 2015. And this one... Um, brought the cast back, like you said, except for CeeLo Green. Right. And this one, uh, was the daughter was named Mavis, and Jenny had a kid named Dennis, and 
Drac uh, Drac was expecting him to have the vampire powers, but he and wasn't showing. Yeah, and, and, and he was waiting for years. So you have at least five years to see if he becomes a vampire, as he was only part vampire, part human. You didn't know which it was gonna be, and he was determined to make sure he became a vampire. And then his dad <laughs> made a visit so he could meet his. Um, great grandchild uh -huh. and he was played by Mel Brooks which yeah was awesome oh like oh my gosh actually he was the original Vlad yeah and Dennis was so adorable they made him with his little curly red hair the adorable uh -huh. little kid and uh, it was like you said it was great it was funny and it had more action in this one than they had in the first right. one right especially on locations are going to and now the hotel's been updated they got the smartphones and Bluetooth. <laughs> they got like travel agency now. The humans are allowed there, and it's uh, it's more vibrant too. Right. It's not just the monster gothic thing with some fun. It's really vibrant stuff with the humans involved. Mm -hmm. And you saw how also had this along with him trying to see if he's a vampire, get him to get his vampire powers. Right. Yeah, all of them acting like supposedly they're monster selves, and they can't do it because they've been humanized for so long that they forgot how to do it. They're not scary to anybody anymore and don't forget Mavis was upset that she, he was doing it so they went to be with uh, Johnny's family right and they were just kind of weird and rude and, and yeah it was the human type of weird right and for them it was kind of like this undertone that they didn't like Mavis but she loved everything about the humans and just make sure she doesn't like Oh, uh, this is hometown. Like she won't right. like any of this stuff. And she was loving everything. She liked how they had the trick bike. Right. She liked the slushies. <laughs> you have a store that's open twenty four hours. Look at all these flavors. She's the only person in the world to be excited about a convenience store. Right. And <laughs> and and she was loving loving everything. But yeah, Johnny's parents were kind of like, eh. and there was that undertone in the movie where there were still people like the humans didn't trust the monsters or vice versa. And it was sort of like an old standing thing that, you know, wasn't there. It was like a the different set of in-law problems. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And still, the whole movie was absolutely fun from beginning to end. Even with little, little Dennis, as you get to near the end of the film, mm -hmm. and the stuff starts to uh, escalate a bit. And like so all these new characters in here were great. Nothing really felt out of place at all. It was mm -hmm. still a really, really fun movie to watch, especially during Halloween. And this one actually got a spinoff as a TV series on the Disney Channel, but the series really isn't it doesn't have the same like the feel. No, right. it's kind of almost a different continuity. It's supposed to show what happened before the events of the movie. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, as soon as you hear the intro of how the series is supposed to start out, is immediately wrong. Right. The first movie hinted on the fact that he was very protective of his daughter. Mm -hmm. He never had to go outside the hotel ever, so it wouldn't be. Of our humans, mm -hmm. uh, and here he decides that he's gonna go on some uh, convention and leaves her in charge of the hotel. Uh, what happens to not leaving her alone? She suddenly turns to the Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like all of a sudden now you can leave her there, and they got all these new characters, new continuity, mm -hmm. all this weird stuff just and showed new up. Voice actors, yeah, so. and it was really, it's really, really weird. But if you happen to like it, that's awesome. If you've never seen the movie and you're also a younger child who's really the target audience, you'll probably like it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get and to... So at the end, we and, and it's no spoilers here. No, you the movie. You've seen the movie. Yeah. We learned that he does have vampire right. powers. Right. And yeah, I mean, he has... And, it was and one of his cousins likes him, one of the werewolves. Yeah, cousins. the one of those... Yeah, I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is his zing, her zing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and... And it has a really great fight scene at the end yes. with all of the, I guess they're gargoyles, I think that's what they mm -hmm. are. Yeah, the gargoyles and them fighting all the monsters is absolutely great and fantastic. Great animation is just, like, really just packs in all this energy into so much of the film. Right. And the, and the funniest part is that Dan didn't know how monsters were supposed to be scary, so the only monster he knew, minus his family, was uh, they were doing a parody of Cookie Monster and Barney, and they have one called Cakey the Cakey the Monster, and it's always nice to share. And he's like, "This is a monster." <laughs> now we did forget to mention that these movies are based on some novels: My Little Monster Sitter, Motel Transylvania, Cakey oh, Land, yeah. Catastrophe. So none of these were written by Adam Sandler. Probably just the scripts or screen. Right, and they had out. some of his friends in the right. movies doing the roles. But I think they did a great job not having read any of these books, of course, probably translating into something that's become enjoyable 
and relatable and fun for everyone to watch. Right. So, now we move on to Hotel Transylvania 3, uh -huh. Summer Vacay. Right. Even though no one calls it Summer Vacay, they just say, just, <laughs> like, just say 3. And this one was Came different. Out 2018. Yeah, actually, this is the most recent one. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, we, they announced that in uh, February they're going to do a fourth one, which I kind of thought they would stop here. Not because the movies aren't good, but because... You don't want to be like Ice Age doing 50 movies and just going wonky because it's starting to with this, but it still was a great movie even though it had more outlandish type of uh, a story. Mm -hmm. And we had even a couple more uh, guest stars in here pretty much. Uh, where this time, this time around, they have uh, they were, as you said, they were in a different location. Right, they were on a ship instead of the hotel because it felt that Dracula was working too hard at the hotel and he needed a vacation. So they put him on this monster cruise, which was the Titanic. Now this one, this it was actually written by Gennady Tartakovsky and Michael Cullors. And you know yes. Tartakovsky from Cartoon Network. Uh huh. With Samurai Jack and, and Dexter's Lab. That's yeah. correct. And it earned, we forgot to tell you about the box office and the draw, but this one did really well. It took $80 million to make and earned over $528 right. million. Dollars. So I guess that's probably why I got a sequel. It was such a success. They said, okay, we'll do a fourth one. Right, so we'll go ahead and tell you more about the stars that appear in here, and then we'll go back and, and mention about the box office for the other two before we wrap it up. Right. So, And here they had two new characters along with two new stars. Mm -hmm. They had Catherine Hahn as uh, Erica who is the great-granddaughter of Van Helsing. And Van Helsing is voiced by oh my Jim Gaffigan. God. And he is, like, dust old. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you see him when he first started out, they show at the beginning of the movie that mm -hmm. he's been hunting him for decades and won't give up. And he's like, you're never going to get me, you know this. And he's been, I guess, this long-standing monster hunter from a generation line of monster hunters and he can never catch Dracula no matter what and it's gotten so bad that at this point now he's just a head with a robot body that like shouldn't even be existing <laughs> and he's trying to get his great granddaughter to capture Dracula says he's not able to do it anymore now you also had um, Adam Sandler had his kids and his wife do some voices, but uh -huh. Chrissy Teigen as the Invisible Woman. Oh yeah, they finally had her to this. And Joe Jonas is cracking. Oh, that was that was just hilarious. And when they would go to these locations for the monsters, they were really brilliant. Mm -hmm. They had one that was the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, they had one where it was sort of like Atlant Atlantis was Monster Vegas, mm -hmm. and they had uh, another one where. It was, it was a third location. It's not coming to mind right now, but they had all these locations that are supposed to be forbidden or abandoned or haunted, and these are all luxury places for the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, it's just really, really fun. We do know that's a little, like I said, a little more goofy than the first two. You can tell by the animation mm -hmm. and their expressions. They were really doing something wonky every frame. And so they this, were really uh, lively. And in this one, they wanted Drac to find him a new zing, a new uh -huh. girlfriend, right. a and new wife. It, it, and it, and it, it comes from the unlikeliest, unlikeliest of places. Right. She it, comes, I should say. Right. And the thing was, from the first two movies, that you only zing once. Mm -hmm. And then it was like the message that, you know, it doesn't have to be just once if, you know, they just, even though she was gone, he was finding a new love anyway. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't always have to be just once. Right. So it was fun, and they they actually had some more action scenes in here as well. They had a lot of uh, subterfuge and fun. Uh -huh. and, and, oh, and, and Tara was, Strong was in, in here too. I think she did so. Franken Lady. Oh yeah, that she sure is. And it was and then it was created as someone else in the UK, mm -hmm. so I guess you had to see, depending on which version you got, which one was in the credit. So like you said, they had a whole lot more characters added. But it was fun. It was really fun and it did get really ridiculous, but it was a rid fun ridiculous. Right. And it really worked for the plot, the story, it just it was just great fun. And as you said, we were pretty apprehensive, like, how are they gonna make this Interesting. They outdid themselves in number two. What could they possibly do for three? And this is what they did. Right. And it was terrific. And box office, let you know, absolutely 
It worked. Right. It absolutely worked. And since there were a lot of characters, we did get that not all of them got a bunch of screens, and they just really focused on Drag. They kind of gave him his own spotlight movie because the others were kind of focused on the daughter and one about the grandchild and then so they gave one kind of more specifically to him they saw the other characters in there they still had roles but you could tell they weren't really a focal point for the plot as much as he was as like with uh, erica right so if you have seen any of these movies let us know in the comments below do you love the entire franchise or are certain numbers your favorite one, two, or three? Right. Are you looking forward to the sequel that's coming out in 2021? Yeah. Which is quite wow. a distance away. It seems to be like a three year gap for mm -hmm. each movie. It takes about three years to do each movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting you know, for animation, scheduling conflicts, uh, they make sure the writers all stay. So I guess I guess that makes sense. So it's almost like what they did with Shrek and some other franchise where it'd be a certain year gap before between sequels and it takes you you a while for you're done if they plan to do an extensive uh, series. Right. Now, the first movie, the original Hotel Transylvania, it, the budget was $85 million and it took in over $358 million, almost, uh, no, about $200 million more than the, less than the third movie. Mm -hmm. The second movie, and that one ran a little shorter, it was only 91 minutes. Yeah, the first one, yeah. It was kind of like the basic length of, of pretty much a feature film, mm -hmm. which is why ones that are lower, like, uh, yeah, lower than that in the runtime, and I'm not doing so well because they feel like they're getting cheated. Not because it doesn't want the story or anything, it's because it's not long enough to garner a theatrical release like they have with Pokemon right. and Powerpuff Girls. Now the the third one was ninety seven minutes. I do remember. That. Yeah, and the second and the one. Second one. Um, yeah, the, we gotta remember what was it again? All right. It took. Um, it had a budget of eighty million, so it runs about the same amount, roughly each film, and it grows over four hundred seventy three million at the box office. So, with each successive movie. Is earning more and more at the box office. So, of course, it's going to be a Hotel Transylvania 4. Right. <laughs> right. So, let's hope Can you blame them? them? Right. So, let's hope for the fourth one. And that one, one ran 89 minutes. Yeah. So, that was like a, like a minute or two shorter. Mm -hmm. So, let's hope that the fourth one still keeps the energy going. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where this franchise will stop, whether on their own or from reviews and box office. Because, like I said, with Ice Age, it's like, yeah, you might want to stop before you go too too far. Right. And if they'll be adapting from one of those novels or if they'll have Gennady Tartakovsky do another writing of the script this time. Right. So, thank you so much for watching this podcast. And Let's... for you, who, those of you who don't like Adam Sandler, these three movies do not suck. Right. <laughs> and uh, let us know what you thought of either all three movies or a particular one that is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. I'm High School Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And again. Blah, blah, blah. Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, give it to you later.